Welcome to Crypto BS. I'm Al. And I'm Craig. And welcome to the show. Uh, we'll bring you a little bit of world news, some crypto news, our calls for the week, and how we're doing on our challenge. Craig, do uh, you want to start with the challenge right out of the gate this week or go with the news? Ooh, starting with the challenge, you say? I, it's just the thought it'd be a little bit backwards from what we normally do. Uh, okay. The, the challenge rules for those new listeners... Um, what we do is each week, Craig and I allocate $100 into a trading account. Uh, it's real money. It's not paper trading. And uh, we'll... Louder. We allocate that money and then we trade it. We give you our calls for the week. And Craig and I are racing to $100,000 off the $100 a week that we allocate. Now, we can do what we'd like to with it. We can hold it, trade it, buy it, sell it, long it. It's up to us. Stake it. And one that we hadn't talked about until two weeks ago is bought it. So, uh, Craig, lately you've been loading into a Bitcoin bot. Tell us how that bot's going. Well, I may say the bot is doing beautiful. It is acting as designed. The goal with the bot version 2, because if you remember version 1, my grids were set at 1% per grid, and I lowered that down to 0.4% per grid. I now am, am hitting the goal of 1% arbitrage per every one to two hours and so based off the calculations i've done this morning i'm getting one arbitrage every one hour and nine minutes for a total as of right now of 422 arbitrages over the last 20 days so lots of little trades in there slowly adds up you know realistically with the amount of money i'm using it's not a whole lot so the the uh, whatever I have in here, I've, I've put 500 in there so far. So I've got $10.33 on grid profits. Now, obviously you can't take that as a percent ratio to what's put in because it was $100 each week. So it doesn't reflect quite accurately what that would be if you just started with 500. But the, the total return on this 500 so far, I'm up $65 so far mm, in the challenge. Very nice. Doing very nothing. Nice but investing in Bitcoin and putting it into bots. Mm. So uh, with that, it is worth noting, I did forget that I had to buy Ripple last week. So this week I'm going to be buying my Ripple a week late. Uh, well, you had all week. You basically have until tomorrow to make that purchase. Uh, with the current price, I think you'd have done better to buy it <laughs> over the weekend, but- uh, Definitely, but I've, I've went ahead and, and taken my money in and I have, I've bought the Ripple now. I need to ask, Am I allowed to bot the Ripple? Yeah, bot away. Okay. If you can, if you can put that into a bot and spin it out, go ahead. I'm going to bot my Ripple as well. So that is my update for this week and what I plan on doing going forward. I'm going to buy and bot my Ripple. Very nice. Where I'm at is, I, <laughs> if you'll remember the very first, sh was it the first show where we did the Gary Berger Bad or was that? I think show? that was number two. Okay, well, I still have my Gary. I have sixty-four Gary, and it's getting me killed right now. It was only it was a ten dollars <laughs> side wager. It was, it's ten dollars side wager. I'm down to five dollars and ninety cents out of my ten dollars that I allocate, allocated there. Um, last week, Craig and I did the uh, Ada versus Ripple over the next year to see who's going to outperform there. I purchased 208 Cardona and uh, currently at about $106.32. So I want $6 on that hundred. And I have it staked at 6.31%. So I'm just going to set it in there and just let it go. Now it's not going to be as good as sticking it into a bot, but that is an option for me as well. And who knows, maybe this week I'll buy another hundred and put it in there as a bot and see which one outperforms. Well, the difference is going to be what the price action on each of these assets are, right? So if you were to buy it and stake it and the price of the asset goes up, you're better off buying and staking it versus the bot will win if the price stays the same or just moves down Sideways. or just uh, minimally up or down, mm -hmm. right? So I guess you would, you would win the bet if prices go up, which we think they're going to do, right? So at some point... Being a believer on these assets going up, I'm going to have to switch out of the bot. The question is when. Mm. Well, do you have a specific number in mind? Are you looking at the market as a whole to make that decision? What 
What is going to be the decision making process on pulling that out? It's, it's definitely going to be a market feeling or if we get some big news on Ripple, maybe. I mean, pretty much by the time I hear the news, it's going to be pumped up anyways. Yeah. So I'm going to have to be somewhat careful on how long I hold it in that bot. But maybe I'll find myself a nice little farm for it, too. We'll see. Hmm. OK, well, I still have six hundred and eight dollars left from my uh, previous trades and I get another hundred dollars this week. I do have a couple I'm looking at. Uh, I think that Solana, after the Solana hack, it, it came down a little bit and it doesn't really scare me that much. So I may go in there. Um, I'm also looking at waves and sand and we will discuss those uh, a little bit later when we get to the weekly, uh, the weekly update on, on the cryptocurrencies. So I guess we can move on. We can talk a little bit about world news. Does Nancy Pelosi landing in Taiwan, does that influence you at all? Coming up. Not yet. Hmm. Okay. Um, are you at all concerned about any adverse actions that China may take to manipulate markets or currencies? Yeah, so obviously if China comes out and they start trying to put some sort of economic pressure on the U.S. or other other countries based off the, the actions of Nancy Pelosi going over to Taiwan, that will affect markets in whole. It'll affect everybody, but it's a question of whether or not they do that. And as of right now, I think that's a no. Would, would anything that they do make you change anything that you're doing right now with your bots or would you just let the bots run? I let the bots run because okay. all, all that bot is going to do is when these prices dip down on potential news that comes out, then it's buying that Bitcoin on the way down. And then when things inevitably recover, like I believe they will, it'll just sell and make a profit for me on the way up. So I'm very comfortable in my bot right now. Okay. Uh, well, right now, the only big news as far as economic impact that China is doing is they've halted the building of a battery plant. And at this point, it, it hasn't even decided where it's going to go. Uh, it's about a $500 billion uh, project or projects, and those are batteries that supply Ford and Tesla. So, you know, maybe if you were interested in shorting Ford or Tesla, that may be something to keep an eye on. They're doing some military drills, but again, nothing impact-wise for us economically just yet. We've still got Russia playing around with the natural gas issue and affecting Europe. And, and I, Europe is making some movements as they recognize it really is a threat uh, for winter. Spain has passed a law that limits offices and stores and hospitality venues on their AC usage. So... Their thermostats, they can't lower it below 81 degrees, Craig. That's... Uh, <laughs> below 81? Below 81 during the summer. That is that is the lowest their AC can go. Yeah. Okay, quick side note. What do you keep your AC at? Well, when it works, we usually keep it about <laughs> 68. So You keep uh, your house at 68? Oh, man. Yeah, my wife likes it frigid. I, we, don't, we don't even turn the heat on until it gets below freezing in our house. Okay, now... This is different because my wife is on vacation, but when she's home, I keep the house at 73, 74. She left. I put it at 76. That is my preferred temperature, 76. Mm. So I don't think 81 would, would really be a big deal for me. I mean, five degrees is five degrees, but I can turn a fan on too. I don't keep fans on in my house either. Click on 81 and see how we sleep tonight. I challenge. would, that I is would a if it weren't for other factors. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I want you to do the Spain challenge and let me know how well you sleep is at 81 we, degrees. Are we going to create a Spain challenge? I think the Spain challenge has been issued. Throw it at 81 degrees and see what it's like. We'll see how that goes. Actually, okay, Friday night, Friday night, I'll do the Spain challenge. Do it. Okay. All right. And we'll report back next week on if you're... Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we've got a Spain challenge issued. To keep <laughs> the Spain challenge. <laughs> I 
I'm not, I'm not cutting this part either. I, I can't. Oh my gosh. All right. So anybody else wants to join the paint, the Spain challenge, uh, put your uh, AC on 81 and sleep tonight and see how it feels. So we've got that going on. Italy uh, is recommending that heating and cooling in public buildings be altered. France is limita- limiting or eliminating streetlight usage. And then in general, those countries are asking for shorter showers and cold showers, which very much sounds like being on a military base. For those of you who have not experienced that overseas, five-minute showers and no hot water. So that's what's coming down from Europe. They are expecting Russia to do things over the over the winter. So again, that is something that could affect us later on, and it's something to keep an eye on as we move forward and being able to be nimble with your crypto uh, buys and sells as we move into uh, into the winter. The I guess really the the big crypto news uh, for the week. We've got a couple of things going on. Solana uh, got hacked, and it it's not even the Solana blockchain that's the the issue here. There's a some type of Apple Wallet exploitation that has taken place, and they're still not even sure exactly how it's happening. But uh, Phantom and Slope Wallets are the ones that are targeted. So if you have any uh, Solana on there, you might want to move it off. And then Michael Saylor is stepping down from MicroStrategies as the CEO. He is taking on a role as the executive chairman, so he's still going to have control over Bitcoin, the buys and sells with it, and then their their Bitcoin strategy. But he's given up management of the corporate operations and day-to-day activities and spending his time focusing on uh, the Bitcoin strategy for them. So that's... Uh, that's really the, the biggest news that's going on right now. The markets are moving up, and I think that uh, I think that things might be looking up here in the near term. Craig, is there anything that is striking your fancy as far as the market movements go? Any cryptos that you're looking at? Anything that you may be extremely interested in, maybe on the private side and not for the challenge? Yeah, for the challenge, I'm mostly sticking to my, my conservative Bitcoin approach, but... Uh, in my private accounts outside of the challenge, I have been digging a little deeper into some of these farms on Beefy Finance, where I have found several that are 50,000 plus percent APY. And so yesterday, yeah, I threw a little bit of money at it, nothing serious, just to see what it what it went like. It was in a a crow escrow farm that initially was set at 72,000% APY, which comes out to just under 2% return a day. I'm liking it. I mean, if if it works out, like in theory, every week you'd have, let's round down to 13% interest. And there's no way Crow was moving that much per week especially just downward, right? If it went down 13% one week, it was probably due to rebound or hold from there. So I'm, I'm up the next week. I just, I don't even fully understand what the S crow is yet. I just kind of went in with faith. Um, luckily I didn't put a lot of money into it. So I, I'm not too worried about needing to know beforehand as one always should, but I plan to learn about it between now and the next podcast. Well, how much has it, has the interest rates moved in the last, 24 hours since you've made this so I put in around 72,000 and then within the next few hours I had checked in and it was in the 40,000s and then when I checked in on it this morning it was back in the 50,000s so it is wavering but it's not like it's just always going down kind of like when cake did their relaunch and the interest rates were high then every time you checked it was a little bit lower this one's been kind of going up and down and if you look at the historical chart on it It does mostly slope downwards, but it's downwards from 200,000% interest into the 50 now. So it's it's still high regardless. The the question is, what is escrow? Is it a variant of the crow token or is it something else entirely? And I haven't been able to figure that out yet. Hmm. Are you, do you have an exit strategy for this? My exit strategy is hold on to it for a week or two, and if I'm disappointed, get out. Okay. Well, after two weeks, sounds like you should be able to hit around 20, 25%. That would be if prices hold, right? So if if I can 
even be up slightly in a couple weeks with the price of crow going down, I would be happy. If the price of crow stays relatively the same or up, I want to be up pretty drastically at 50,000% APY. Um, but if the market also really tanks for some unforeseen news and we see everything get hit 10, 15, 20% and I end up minus 10%, I'm, I mean, I'm not too, too mad about that either. It's, it's going to be, if anything comes below those numbers, you know, crow is roughly 14, 15 per, or 15 cents right now. And if it's still 14, 15 cents next week and I'm, I'm not up very much because whatever this S crow thing is, is dragging me down I don't, I don't want any part of that i'm just out you know usually we build the show as i'm the risk taker and you are the conservative one and while you're being very conservative with the challenge in your private accounts this is not a conservative move at all <laughs> well i i feel like i'm allowed to take risk with a percentage of my investments and so where i have my IRA accounts and my individual brokerage accounts and and the other various investment vehicles that I have that are less risky my personal crypto trading I have a good amount that's also still lower to moderate risk but there's going to be a handful of things that I say you know what screw it let's let's have some fun swinging for the fence it's not even swinging for the fence. It's just like, eh, this is interesting. What's escrow? I don't know. It's 50,000% interest. Let's go. And sometimes that will absolutely bite me in the butt. Actually, most of the time it absolutely bites me in the butt. But, eh, you know, it's well, fun. It's you know, paid entertainment. On, on several occasions, you have taken some pretty significant risks that I was not willing to. This is one of those times. And another one of those times is with um, doing the, the crow... What, oh, is it the chronode? Is that the chronode? Yeah. Oh God. So that that was one that didn't quite make sense to me either, and I ended up not investing into that one because I couldn't grasp the concept of return and sustainability. You said let's roll with this, and sustainability is their biggest problem. For those of you that don't know about chronodes, chronodes. They well, first off, I don't like the name node per se. It's it's more or less you're just buying a a share, or it's not even quite a share because you're not buying a piece of the company. You're buying the right to earn a certain amount of profit from them, and there's no return on that. You can't sell your quote unquote node back into the market to make your money back. You just put your money in, and then the whole point is to wait on an ROI and in a certain you know predetermined time frame and the the issue is that they are paying out so many rewards that it's not sustainable and people are coming in with a certain expectation and then they have to cut those expectations and when that expectation gets cut then the price of chronodes drops and so not only are your rewards getting cut but then the value of those rewards are getting cut and what seemed like a relatively promising idea has slowly but surely started to fade. I know the moderation team's working on a solution. I'm hopeful. I'm still in it because there's really not a way out. Like I said, there's not a way to sell your node. So you're just kind of in it when you're in it. But I, I am hopeful for a return on my investment at some point. My normal follow-up question. Do you have an exit strategy? Well, there is no exit. That's the problem. There's no exit. I mean, you have the node, you can't sell it, you're in. I mean, the, the only thing you can do at this point is, is there are maintenance fees that go into this and you could stop paying the maintenance fees so that you're not putting more money in. But the only reason to put a maintenance fee in is to withdraw your earnings or to continue to make earnings. So as long as the price of crow nodes moves relative to crow within certain parameters it is still technically profitable and therefore it's still worthy of putting in to the maintenance fee because really all i do is i withdraw my rewards i use those to pay off the maintenance fee and the rest is profit so i'm not really putting any more of my own money in i'm just putting more of the rewards back into it um, but when that stops being profitable, or if it's just marginally profitable, I'll probably just stop wasting my time. Hmm. 
So that's pretty much the extent of what you're looking at going forward on trying to draw that out. Yeah. And and to be clear, we're not talking about being risky with 20% of my assets or even 10%. I think chronodes would equate to be somewhere around 0.6% of my my investments that I put into that. So it's it's play money. Like I said, I'm paying for entertainment and opportunity. So would you say that you you use less than 1% of your current available to current availability on these risk high risk investments? Yeah, I would I would say if you totaled up all of my high risk trading, so if you want to take margin in there too, if you want to take margin trading and some of these other, you know, investment projects like this or even some of these tokens, I don't even know what they are, but they have cool interest rates. I would say over the course of the last couple of years of crypto, it would total to be around 5% of my total investments. I would say that mine fluctuate based on the environment. And I will say most of that is margin trading. Most of that money that I've done risky stuff with was margins and not stuff like this project. Well, I still think that, I still don't know that we've bottomed out in this market. And this could just be a little bear market rebound and then we still got deeper to go. And I think that that's a possibility. The longer that this continues, this bear market recovery continues, the better I feel about, okay, maybe we have gotten there, but I really like to see that double bottom. I'd really like to see it touch 18,000, Bitcoin touch 18,000 again, and then come back up from there. And that's where I feel a whole lot more comfortable. I think it's going to take a really bad day in the market to get back down to 18. I like I've said it since day one. I don't think Bitcoin likes to be under 20. We've seen some pretty decent progress up from the last time it was under 20. And I think it's going to have a hard time getting back down there. I think it's going to take a really, really bad day in the market to drive it back towards 20 and then even worse to go below 20. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling like 18 was the bottom. It may be touched again with bad news, but you know, you I'm sure you've heard other people talk about Bitcoin, you know, maybe touching 12,000. I've heard 16, I've heard 8. Um I just don't I don't feel like that's realistic at this point. I think short of any drastically terrible news, I think 18's the bottom. And if it gets back down there, I'll be pushing more in. I most certainly will be as well. And I haven't gone long on having investments in in this challenge. In the last six weeks that we've been doing this, there's nothing that I've bought and said, okay, I'm going to hold on to this. Everything has been working on trades and trying to scalp here and there. Nothing has been investments. It's all been short-term movements. I feel a lot better going forward. I'm still not ready to com- completely commit to this being time to go long yet. However, I will say that if Bitcoin right now it's at 23, 23, range, if it'll break 24, five, maybe 25,000 and liquidate some of those shorts, that's going to push a lot more buys in. And I think that we'll get a good push up to hopefully 28,000, 27, 28,000. At that point, I will be tempted to sell what Bitcoin that I've been buying over the last couple of weeks at these lower prices. That's where I would I would look to get out of it is at that range right there and be looking for a pullback and then a, a rebuy in around that 25000 and be watching for it to come back all the way to the 18000 mark. Hmm. Well? Well, as far as what I'm doing this week, I'm, I'm looking at sand. Uh, that's one that I would be interested in going long in, and I may not do the full uh, $100 that I have coming into it. I may buy $50 worth of sand just to stick back. I do like this price. I do like the range it's at right now, and then put the other $50 in my account to trade. Anything that I use, like I said I had earlier, I had $608 that I didn't – I had trades in last week, but they didn't ever execute. I missed one of them by a tenth of a cent on uh, on Matic. And that was really frustrating because that would have been a pretty good lick. Um, but I, I don't think that I'm going to margin anything this week. 
Uh, I have been in the past going 3X or 5X, but I think this week I, I may just put in that full 600, 650 in and, uh, and just trade it straight up on spot. So that's one that I'm looking at. Like I said, sand, maybe do a $50 long-term investment. I haven't done that in the market yet um, during this challenge, but it's something I'm interested in. Uh, I like DOT. Once, for me, when I'm looking at the chart, the charts, once DOT broke that $8.18 range, I started feeling pretty comfortable. I'd like it to retest that. It's currently at $8.32. If it would hit that one more time and bounce, I would feel pretty good about pushing in that six six fifty in on on dot, watching it run up to that nine dollar range and getting out of it. Um, and then lastly, I still like Cardona. Uh, it's around fifty one cents. I like the range it's in right now. I think that we could see it push on up to that fifty three or fifty five cent range, and that would be another one that I'd be looking at getting into. So for me, those oh waves. Waves has my attention. Uh, it's at $5.75 currently. I'm looking for it to break $5.82. If it breaks $5.82, that's going to be that's going to be where I start getting focused at, especially if there's a retest in that range. So those are the ones that I'm looking at and what I'm looking at going going with this week. Uh, Craig, anything else that uh, that looks interesting to you as far as the crypto markets go? Have we checked in on Burger in a minute? Oh, I have. I not. haven't looked at Burger since I got out of it. I have no idea what Burger. I'm gonna. Is. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. I have to know. <clears throat> I have to know. Hey, you want to take a guess on where it's at? Last time, oh. last time we looked at it, it was in like the low to mid threes, and it had jumped up there from like seventy cents over the matter of a week. I don't know. I'm I'm betting that it's in the the high twos. I'm going two seventy seven. I'll take the under. You'll take the under on two seventy seven. I'll take I'll take under two dollars. There's no way that it it stayed that high. Gross. Okay. Well, I wish I would have kept my short on burger. I, I wish I wouldn't have just broke even and got out. It's well under two seventy seven. I'll put the over under at one seventy seven. Uh, I'll go under. It is under. Oh my gosh. It is at 157. No way. 157. Oh, you would have killed that short if you I know, let it go. I know. Every time I see these types of coins pump up, I think there's no way they're holding that price. And then I put in a short and they keep going up. And I'm like, I just want to get the hell out of this short. And then I get out of it. And then I look at it two weeks later. I'm like, man, I wish I wouldn't have got out of that short. Man. Because I call it. I call it every time I just get the time frame wrong. What's rule number one, Craig? Be patient. Be patient. I'm, I'm not patient. Well, you know, maybe that's another part of it too. Maybe if you didn't leverage as much into it, you wouldn't feel as much pressure to. I think from now on, early. the key for me is going to be whenever I feel like it is time to short something, I wait for it to pump one more time, and then that gives me some breathing room. Hmm. Because then if it pumps again. What are the odds it's going to pump more than three times in a row, right? And then I'm just waiting for it to come back down to the second pump level. And instead of getting in after the first pump and then re-upping on the second second pump, and then I got to wait for it to come like halfway down from that, I just got to I gotta be more patient. It's not be patient for you. It's be more patient. Yes. Uh, well, you know, what you were using as a strategy was the KuCoin gym picks. Yeah, the gym box. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything on there that looks good today? Anything that you would think uh, had a really good run, a good pump, and maybe something worth worth shorting? Does the call sign CTI scream anything to you? No. Hmm. I don't know what the name of it is. I know it is CTI. That is the current gym box. It is up 165% today. And let's take a look at this chart real quick. We're just going to go live through the process of how I evaluate your shorts. Yes. So CTI. Well, first thing to know is that you cannot short CTI. Not enough volume. It is, it is not an isolated margin token on KuCoin. You may be able to short it somewhere else, but I cannot short that one. So it's already off the list. But if I continue down on... Yeah, but that 150% rip one day would be one that would be... 
Oh, it'd be beautiful to short. Um, another hot token is swing by. Uh, that sounds like a coin that's also not going to be able to be shorted, but I will look at it anyways. Swing, yep, I didn't even get the SWIN and it's already not there. So that's out. Now if we go over to the gainers list here, those are the top two. Do I recognize any of these other names? Not one bit. And maybe we'll look at the losers and see if I can long something. Do I recognize anything here? And yet again, I recognize no names. Actually, I take that back. PLD. Now I'm going to look at this. We'll see if it's in the margin. It is also not. So most of the ones moving right now are very low volume tokens that KuCoin won't let me do margin trading with. And therefore, I got nothing I'm looking at. Okay, well... You've got my calls for the week. I like, uh, like I said, I like Sand. I like a little bit of Theta. I like a little bit of Matic. Solana is interesting. I think that the the pullback that they've had from the hack is is short term, and you make a clip five eight percent in the short term. So that's definitely one that I'm looking at. And then uh, Cardona, I like it uh, once it breaks at fifty one and a half, maybe fifty two. And then pushing up and looking for a sale around 55. Not that any of this is financial advice, as we are not financial advisors. But uh, we are with uh, Crypto BS. I'm Al. And I'm Craig. Thanks for tuning in.